Hello, my name is David Giles and I work at Hitex Development Tools and uh, you'll be listening to a presentation on TESI which is a software unit testing tool package from Razorcat. Okay, so this is what the TESI uh, main application looks like. We'll add some modules into here and some source code and we'll run some tests. So first of all, I'll create a new module for ourselves. Um, so I click on add module and here I type a name in for the new module which uh, I'm planning to create. Um, in this case, we'll call it uh, temperature uh, check new and hit the return key. And um, then I highlight uh, the module and click right click um, and go down to the properties dialog. And here is where I select all the environment which I want to use for the testing, um, as well as um, the source code that um, I want to, uh, uh, to to look at and test. And today we'll be running the uh, the tests with the TMS 570 compiler um, and the TI Code Composer Studio. Come up onto the Sources tab, and here we have the name of the module. Uh, within this uh, Source Stroker module um, box here, I have to uh, select um, the source files which I wish to test. So I click on Add File, um, and then I go Hunt in for my C source fi file, uh, in which case it's in this directory here. Um, select Temperature Check Jot C, and uh, this will be added into the um, uh, the box and then below in this compilers dialog box I basically just um, put in the include paths TI Code Composer Studio, Frosty TI and the headers are located in this headers uh, subdirectory and I click on uh, OK and so let's just have a, a quick look at that uh, C source file uh, that we're actually looking to um, to test. Uh, contained within the C source file are uh, two uh, functions, one of which is called uh, frost check and uh, the other one of which is called frost check uh, with hysteresis. So the only one which uh, we're going to look at today is this particular one here. Um, and you can see the function is composed of uh, one input parameter which is called temperature uh, and this is a, a signed 16-bit um, uh, integer and the returned um, value is of the type um, uint8 underscore t which is an unsigned um, char. And when we kind of look at the function which is what I have uh, detailed here um, you can see that I pass uh, a temperature value into the function um, and um, the software is um, designed um, to produce a frost warning or not depending on what the temperature is. So it's a relatively simple program. I call with one parameter I determine whether there's a frost warning condition or not. If there's no frost warning condition I'll return with um, a value of true or false depending on whether the temperature is less than or equal to 3 degrees um, or not. So very very straightforward. Uh, we'll see what Tessie makes of this now. So when I click on this um, plus uh, icon, um, Tessie will pass a parser um, over that uh, C source code uh, and the parser will actually determine the interface for us um, and by the interface I mean what the input parameters and what the return parameters are um, for that function. Um, so Tessie will identify uh, all of the functions that are contained within that C source module um, and also all of the um, parameters which are passed and uh, returned. So as you can see here now that uh, Tessie has correctly identified that there were two um, functions uh, contained within that C source file, one called frost check and one called frost check with hysteresis. If I highlight the frost check function which is the one that we're interested in testing today and then I come up onto uh, here and uh, click on the, um, the interface button uh, we can see what Tessie has actually made of this function. Um, so having looked at um, the code uh, with the parser, Tessie has correctly identified that there's one input parameter uh, which is a, a sign short um, and the passing direction for this is, uh, is input and Tessie has also correctly identified that there's one return parameter uh, which is uh, an unsigned char. Um, so what we can do uh, from here now is we can basically start to input some test data to actually test this function. So what we'll do is we'll come over into this uh, right hand pane now and if I uh, click the insert button uh, we can generate um, the first test case uh, for this C function. Um, so this is uh, something which is called the test data editor or TDE for short and this allows me to build um, test conditions uh, for that function under test. 
Um, so here for example we have the input temperature um, so what I'll do is I'll type in a value of minus 100 degrees uh, as the first test condition and here on the right hand side we have the uh, return values or the outputs from the uh, from the function call uh, now what I can do is I can hit the space bar um, and all of the hash defines which the C source code knows about um, is, is displayed within um, this dialog box so by um, hitting the spacebar we get a list of all of the uh, hash defines which are present in the source code. So I'll select um, fault, I close the uh, test data editor down, uh, click on yes to save the test data uh, and you can see that the, uh, the white box has now um, turned yellow to indicate we have complete test data uh, for test case number one. Um, I'll hit the insert key a few more times, two, three, four, so I now have a total of four test cases. Um, I'll now enter the test data for the other uh, ones. So I'll have uh, a value of say minus 25 degrees which should bring the frost warning uh, on. And um, we'll have another uh, test case, test case number three, uh, where we'll have a, a value of plus 20, uh, sorry, we'll have one of zero degrees C. And um, again, we should the frost warning should be on for that, and we'll have a, a fourth and final test case um, with a, a value of 25 degrees C positive, and um, that will uh, basically yield uh, a frost warning condition, which is uh, which is off. So now have four completed uh, test cases, all of which have got test data within them, and you can see all of those white boxes now turn yellow. Uh, so I can highlight all four of those. Uh, test cases for test execution. Um, I can click on this uh, razor cat uh, symbol which you see here and um, this pulls up the execute test dialog box and uh, within here one of the pop down menus um, is the instrumentation. Um, so we can select between branch coverage which is C1 um, C2 which is MCDC coverage or we can have a combination of the two so in this case I'll select C1 C2 which is branch and MCDC coverage and uh, then hit the execute button so Tessie is now uh, compiling and linking um, the code and um, it will basically generate an image uh, which will be downloaded into the Code Composer Studio and uh, the tests will then be executed within there. So as you can see here the tests are currently being executed. Um, all four have now done. Uh, an XML uh, table is, uh, is being generated and uh, when we come back uh, into this properties dialog box on the right hand side here you can see the four uh, test cases which we had have now changed color and they've gone um, from uh, yellow to, to green. Um, if we uh, click on the monitoring icon uh, we will actually get um, some feedback um, information from this. So uh, you can see here um, we have a flow chart which has been produced uh, for us automatically um, by Tessie which represents the paths which we've actually taken through the code. Um, at the bottom we have a list of the C source code um, that, uh, represents, uh, that is represented within this um, flow chart uh, and we have some statistical information um, for us as well. So if I click on this grey box for example uh, we can see that that grey box represents this line of code here and then when I come down onto the diamond symbol uh, we can see that um, this is uh, representative of an if statement uh, within the source code. Uh, here there's uh, two atomic decisions uh, contained within that uh, within that, that if statement and um, the output of that um, um, test cases, the four test cases, was that one test case actually took this path through the code uh, which is when um, the whole of that uh, if statement uh, evaluates to true um, and we have three test cases uh, as highlighted here uh, which have actually taken the false path um, and, and again when we get to this diamond symbol here we can see that um, two of the um, test cases um, uh, took the um, um, the uh, the true decision from the if statement and one test case um, took the uh, took the else statement which you can see here. 
Um, so we notice that uh, for C1, which is branch coverage, we actually get 100% branch coverage. We get we have a little tick icon which represents that that's fully tested. Uh, which if you kind of actually look um, at the flow chart, you can see that we have test cases that take both the the, the, um, the true condition and the false condition. Um, so in fact, we have 100% branch coverage in that every single branch has been taken. Um, if you have 100% branch coverage, it also implies that you have 100% line coverage as well. But you'll notice that this um, diamond um, is actually colored red rather than green, which indicates that there's something not quite right here. So if I highlight the diamond symbol, um, you'll notice that on the right hand side, uh, we now have the truth table uh, appear for this um, uh, if statement. Uh, now within the if statement we actually have uh, what's called two atomic decisions. So the first atomic decision is if the temperature is less than minus 60 degrees and the second atomic decision is if the temperature is greater than um, 80 degrees. Um, so there's two atomic decisions within here um, and using the n plus 1 rule we need an absolute minimum number uh, th uh, of three test cases to satisfy this criteria. Now when we um, look at the truth table which has been automatically generated by TESI um, you can see that we have um, a test case where the temperature is minus 16 de degrees uh, equates to false and if the temperature is greater than 80 degrees equates to false that we have a, a test condition that satisfies this. But you'll notice where we have a red line which indicates that we, uh, we currently don't have um, a test case where the temperature is actually greater than 80 degrees uh, where that equates to, um, to true. So what we would need to do is to get the 100% MCDC coverage through this function um, then uh, we need to go back and we need to add a test case where the temperature is greater than um, 60 degrees. So I come back into here, I press the insert key, we generate a fifth te test case and uh, we open up the test data editor again. So I type in a value which is going to be more than 85 degrees, so I type in, sorry 80 degrees. So I type in 85 and I know that's going to generate um, an expected condition where the return value is going to be uh, fault. Close the test data editor, click on yes to save it, and then highlight all five of the test cases, click on the razor cat icon, and uh, again we'll keep the uh, C1, C2 instrumentation on and click on uh, execute. As it's only the uh, the test data that has changed this time around, um, we don't have to rebuild um, the image which is flashed onto the microcontroller. So um, in this particular instance, all we have to do is download new test data from the PC as the tests are being executed. Okay, we have five green uh, icons now, uh, which would suggest everything is okay. And then when we have a, a quick look, um, at the uh, code coverage viewer which is uh, automatically generated for us by TESI. First thing you'll note uh, is the MCDC coverage icon uh, has uh, now um, changed to, to a tick um, and you can see that the, um, the red uh, diamond icon has also changed now to a green and if I highlight it um, you can see for the two atomic decisions I now have three test cases uh, which exercise it fully in accordance with the requirements for MCDC coverage. Okay, so now we have uh, successfully got our MCDC uh, code coverage um, uh, information. Uh, we now need to output that to a report of uh, one type or another. And Tessie has the ability to generate uh, a whole series of uh, uh, reports in different formats. Um, these include HTML, uh, compiled HTML, Microsoft Word, uh, plain text or Excel format. So I'll click on uh, HTML uh, in this case and what this will do uh, for us now is generate a um, uh, HTML document which will be opened up in um, Windows and this is the output report which we uh, which we get. And there's some information at the top here. You can see the total number of test cases equals five uh, and successfully executed with five. Uh, there's none failed and uh, there's also none which have been not executed. Um, so you can jump directly down to say test case number three and uh, you can see here um, in this particular instance we have an input value of naught. Um, the expected output 
put value of 0 degrees C was that the frost warning would be on and as you can see here we have the hash defined name and uh, we also have the expected value and the actual value uh, uh, was also uh, a 1 and the hash defined name for that as well. Thank you for listening to the presentation on TESI. Um, if you're from the UK or from Ireland and are interested in further information on TESI then please contact David Giles at Hitex UK Limited uh, on my email address djiles at hitex.co.uk or if you're from other regions uh, and want further info then please contact my colleague Frank Buchner at Hitex in Germany and his email address is frank.buchner at hitex.de Thank you.